Hello chemists, hope you are well. So today we're going to move on to study and find out how to calculate an enthalpy changes of solution. Okay, this might be something you've already started reading about in your textbooks. So that's your title for today. Before we can do that, we really need to kind of a recap on solubility of ionic compounds. Remember, we're still talking about ionic substances. We've just come off the back of looking at lattice energy. And the two concepts are very closely related. So if we imagine this is an ionic lattice, this could be sodium chloride with the positive ions there representing Na plus and the negative ions representing Cl minus. The ionic lattice is held together by strong forces of electrostatic attraction. Now, in order for this to actually become a solution, these strong forces of electrostatic attraction must be broken. And that's actually going to require a significant amount of energy. So it might be it might seem strange then that simply by adding water to an ionic lattice, you're able to separate those ions. That seems bizarre in a way because you're not adding heat, you're not providing any sort of huge energy input that is allowing that to happen. So how is it even possible? Now, if we think back to when we studied hydrogen bonding, the reason why it's possible is because of the nature of water itself. Although it might be, it may, might not be obvious what is going on, there are bonds forming when you add water to an ionic lattice like this. And those bonds are forming between the very polar water molecules and the charges on these ions, okay? So as your starter activity, I'd like you to pause the video and draw what water looks like, showing the dipoles that are formed as a result of the differences in electronegativity. So in other words, I want you to draw what a water molecule looks like with its dipoles. Hopefully you came up with something like this. And this is, of course, looking back at a topic we did right at the start of last year. OK, so we've got a positive charge here on the hydrogen and we've got a negative charge here on the oxygen. And that's because of the huge difference in electronegativity between these two. Remember, the difference is so large that water is polar, but it's also exhibiting hydrogen bonding. Remember, that's a really, really key point. It exhibits hydrogen bonding. And as a general rule, all ionic substances will dissolve in water. And the reason is because they also have their charge difference. They have their positive and negative ions. Water has its positive and negative sides. OK, we can't call them ions. Um, we'd have to call it a dipole. Um, and water is able to work its way into the ionic solid by actually forming new bonds between the ions and the polar water molecule. These two images show it really nicely. We can see here that the water has surrounded the chloride ion here with the positive ends of the water molecule, the hydrogens, attaching effectively to the chloride. And remember, these are actually forming a form of bond, okay? Here on the sodium, we've got the oxygen, the negative end of this dipole sticking to the sodium and surrounding the sodium ion. And effectively, what we've got here is exactly what we have when we form a solution. We're going from solid to an aqueous solution. And the reason why that's able to happen is because of the dissociation of these ions through the actions of the very, very polar water molecules. Now, I just want to get this point across because it, it is somewhat confusing. When you are forming bonds between the ions and the polar water molecules, you're actually releasing energy in that bond formation. And it's that energy that is released that is able to compensate or overcome, overcome the energy required to separate those strong forces of electrostatic attraction between the ions. And just to kind of give values to that, let's imagine uh, sodium chloride, because that's the one we were just looking at. Now, this has a lattice energy of, I think, just under a thousand. It's uh, minus seven, eight, seven kilojoules per mole. OK, so this is how much energy is required to actually separate the ions. So what this means is in the actual 
forming of bonds between uh, the water and the ions, and we call that an iron dipole bond, okay? Because basically we've got ions and the polar parts of the water molecule bonding with each other. This amount of energy must be enough to overcome this energy here, and that will allow those ions to separate. 